Hey guys, welcome back, or if you're new, welcome. Um, this is one I've been excited about for a little while now. Uh, this is a big, heavy, and uh, pretty old KitchenAid. You can see on the tag right here, let me zoom in. This is a Model 4. Uh, KitchenAid manufactured by Hobart. Um, it's got a lock and unlock lever here. An interesting thing about this, if you look right here, this is only a three speed. Now, whether this works or not, I have no idea. Because I'm going to show you the cord, it's probably the worst cord that I've ever seen. I mean, I'm not even going to attempt to plug that in. Now, you can just see this thing is, I mean, it looks like it's melted in places. Um, not sure what the story is with it, but like I said, there was no way I'm plugging this cord in. Um, this is the breaker popping, waiting to happen. I mean, this thing is shot. So what I might do is just go through on the back here and just get this old cord off and see how the rest of the wiring looks in here. And then at that point, I may uh, I may throw a cord on here temporarily just to test it and run it and make sure that this thing's going to run. Um, so. Anyways, that's the game plan, so I think, uh, I think I'm going to just get started on it. Like I said, this thing looks, uh, this thing looks pretty rough. I've never seen one of these before, Model 4 like this, so this will be interesting. Um, I like ones that, that are new, new to me to do. I mean, it doesn't look that different than, than most of the kitchen aids. But the I noticed the speed control is uh, kind of flipped. It's got this looks like the same identical speed control as on you know your other kitchen aids, except this this part back here with the contacts is flipped. And it may be a little more heavy duty as well. Um, and the switch is right back here. Alright, so if I can get you guys a shot of this. There's the switch, so if you turn it on, you see it throws the switch to the arm position. There's off, there's on, and then you can see it runs through the speeds. Same way as the other ones, I mean the part with the with the one screw and the spring. The spring is attached to the side it's here on this one, but uh, that moves in and out on a contact. So I imagine this isn't going to be too different than, you know, the other kitchen aids that we've done here. Um, so it's just a matter of, uh, of getting it apart and seeing. I think, actually, I think we may have to get quite a bit off of here just to get to the cord. So we may, um, we may not bother, um, you know, just throwing a temporary cord on. We might just go, go through here and just start taking it apart. Um, I got to get this band off of here first. And uh, this one is getting completely restored. This will be powder coated in white. Um, you know, apparently that was the original color. This thing, you know, has been repainted. So we're going to look under this band here. And I owner said if you take a look under the band, you can see the original color. So that's what we're going to do. We'll take our band off. Yeah, which aside from a couple scratches it does seem to be in pretty good shape. Yeah, and there you go, you can see this thing was originally white at some point. So I want to bring this back to the original white. Um, I guess I'll start taking this apart here at the speed control. Uh, as soon as I find my pliers. Our springs off of here. And then we've got one wire here that goes to the resistor. And here these appear to be somewhat color coded. I 
So there's some solid wire in here. one um, I mean I would guess looking at the plug on here you know I would guess maybe 1940s um, somebody had mentioned that they, they believe these were from the 50s but I mean they may have been made from the 40s through the 50s I'm not really sure you know on this model I know absolutely nothing about this model um, I'm just assuming based on like I said, what the cord looks like governor off of here or speak until I guess the governor is the part that's on the end of the armature shaft <coughs> I've been actually pretty excited about starting this one here This is off, and it does look identical to you know, the ones that are on most of the other KitchenAids. And I think for this one, I'm going to run out of room. Uh, I'm going to start making a pile of parts that are getting powder coated. Alright, so let's see if I can pop this off right away. Yep, see that one just came right off. Sometimes they do, sometimes you really got to fight with them. And then there's a pin here on the shaft. It has to come out as well. And I'll start setting internal parts over there. Um, okay, so here, looks like we've got an extra wire and I'm guessing that's because the switch is in the back here. Um, so we'll go through and disconnect this one. And our wiring may be, you know, a little different on here just because where parts are, are at. So we're going to have to try to remember, you know, what, what part went where when we uh, put this back together. And let's just take this resistor off of here now. That way we can give it a look over and make sure it's not burnt. Which I've yet to see a, a bad resistor coil on on any of these uh, kitchen aids. I mean they're, they're pretty damn durable. Yeah, I mean other than being dirty it shows no signs of being burnt. Alright. This is, looks like it's sandwiched in between the top and bottom half here. And that's another part that is going to be different about this one is it looks like the way they these two halves are joined together is different. And once we get these springs off here, I don't have to worry about losing them anymore. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Alright. So I'm going to see I'll take these brushes out and I'm going to see if I can take this apart from the back here. Alright, these brushes are about halfway worn. So I may have to order up a set of brushes for these, for this one here. decent amount left on them, but if it's getting restored, you know, you, you want to have new parts on there. Alright, so we got those brushes out. I'm going to take these nuts off here, and then we'll see if we can pull armature and everything out the back like we do. So the other one. I don't even need a 
ratchet for these. Finger tight. Oh, yeah, you know what? There's something pushing against there, I imagine. I'm just going to be careful taking this out. Let me get this uh, capacitor out of here, too. And that is, looks like, 0.175 microfarad. Get these nuts off of here. Now we should be able to slide this assembly out now. I think. Good, I guess, as far as coming out for us. So for this shift lever here, the, the lever for the speed control, I'm gonna try and clear that. There we go. The wires through. All right. It's got the same kind of setup for pushing too, where you can take that apart, get pushing all cleaned out. All right. Let's see if we can get this steel plate out of here. Nice amount of carbon. You know where all the brushes went. All right. We should be able. Armature out. Um, everything seems to spin pretty freely here. Here's uh, why that felt spring loaded. There's springs and washers in here on this shaft. So let's go ahead and get that off before we drop these. Let's see if we can get our armature out. There we go. Wow. That's got a heavy duty bearing on here. I mean, like ball bearings. The armature looks decent. It's a little bit worn, um, but we can fix that up and get everything else all polished up on there. All right. It appears that this wire right here goes to the brush holder on the left side and then this wire goes to the field coil. Um, the cord I think uh, comes up here on this side. Yep, here's part of it. Oh yeah, see, I'm glad we didn't fire that up. Let's turn this in and see here. See, this is one of the leads for the cord. As you can tell, I mean, it's just brittle and just falls apart. And, you know, there's probably bare wire in here somewhere, I'm sure. That's uh, one cord lead and the other one. is here and as you can see that's pretty much in the same in the same boat there. I mean it, the, the coating just comes right off of it. So let's go ahead and disconnect this and let's disconnect this one. Alright. Now I'm trying to see, uh, this goes to the field coil, 
one of these. And I believe it's this one. Is it this one? I'll go to the other brush holder. Maybe not. I think maybe we'll pull the fuel coil out and then we can get a better look and see. Um, I do think I gotta get this cord out of here first though. Not sure that that's gonna happen. Yeah, see, this would have been quite a bit coming off of here. I mean, you have to take quite a bit of stuff apart just to just to get this cord. I'm gonna cut this off here out of the way, though. the switch attached and how does it attach? I believe it's attached further back so I can't even get the switch out of the way yet. So I think before we pull that out we may have to separate these two halves here. Oops, sorry, you guys couldn't see there for a little bit. Let me get this off here first. Screw heads are filled with gunk. But so far by looking at it, I mean it doesn't look like uh really it doesn't look like um there's anything that, that would keep it from running. I just gotta figure out how does this come off. Ah, it does thread in there, okay. So the screw with that so I remember where that screw goes. Alright. Now I gotta see if I can get to all of our screws here. There should be four screws that hold these two halves together. I can just imagine what the grease inside of this one is going to look like. Screws in the back here somewhere. Yep. Yeah, it looks like somebody painted this with a paintbrush and some house paint. strip it first before I put it in the sandblaster. We'll see. Alright, so we got these halves unscrewed. I believe that's all there is to this. And I'll gently try to Separate it here just in case. There's more to it. I mean, I would think. I wouldn't think I would have to uh, get the gearbox apart, but maybe. All right. Let me see if I can figure out how this is together. See, I mean, everything turns pretty decent on here. Alright. I would guess this ring just snaps on. So very gently, I'm going to try to tap it down. Yeah, it's moving already. Be very gentle with this. We don't want to scratch it or dent it. There we 
we go. All right, well, that came off pretty easy, but you can see it's nasty and dirty in there. And there's some paint that you can see where masking tape was on there, so I take that off. All right, now I wonder if I gotta drop this pin out here. Like I said, I haven't seen one of these before, so I'm just kind of winging it right now. I'm um, just looking at it to try to see what may be holding it all together. Okay. Let me get this pin out. And I imagine this plant here should come right out, maybe. Is that what we're thinking here? And it's come down a little bit, but uh, I get the feeling it's stuck on this shaft in the center here. So let me see if I can. some more hands. Um. Alright, I'm going to see if I can pull down on, on this and drive that up at the same time. I just don't have enough hands. Never gonna work. Not with two hands. It's starting to go. And you can see I got a gap opened up here. I'm just gonna have to work it slowly. That shaft has probably got, you know, some corrosion and gunk on it, which is going to make it a little more difficult to come out. But I guess going just a hair at a time. And I can see the hole here where that pin went through, hanging down below the shaft. too hard or beat them anything too hard, that's for sure. And as much grease is in here, I'm mean, trying to avoid, you know, taking a heat gun to it if I can. Just because of, uh, you know, how messy that could be. If I can get it to move like this. in the right spot. So close. There we go. Whew. All right. Here is what we've got inside of here, grease and whatnot, big old washer here. Uh, that right there, I'm sure some kind of counterweight. Looks like looks like it would be a counterweight. Um, and there's the gear that turns the thing that you know the, the plantary gear that revolves around the, the sun gear in there. Um, We'll get a better look at this once we get it all degrees. I'm just going to set it aside for now. I gotta get 
get some of this grease off my hands and off these tools. I figured that would be some pretty bad looking grease in there. And yeah, it was. Alright. Now, I wonder if we can separate these two halves here. Or what else would be holding them on? Let me look and see if there's any more screws here. I get the feeling there may be some screws hiding under here somewhere. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. There they are. Alright. Yep, there's screws hiding under here underneath a layer of grease. There's one. See, with a little bit of time and patience, I mean, you can find what holds these things together and, and get them apart. I mean, I don't know. There may be, you know, service manuals for these online or whatever, but by the time I Actually, could find one if I can even find one. You know, and look at it. I'll have it all apart. Uh, this looks like there's five, five screws in here holding this together. Plus the four big ones in the in the rest of the body there. All right. Now let's see how we're looking as far as coming apart. There we go. Now you can see it's wanting to separate, and I believe I see a gasket in here. Just not sure how big it is, but let's go through and pull this whole piece off. And let's try to pull our gasket off here since I'm not so sure we can find a replacement. Alright, so now you see the way our cord was ran on there. And how much would be involved in just replacing the cord on here? I mean, it's obviously, it's not a very easy task to get in there and replace a cord. At that point, you might as well do everything. There's a lot of grease in here. Um, we'll, we'll get that all cleaned out though in a little bit. I think we'll start on this here. Okay, see, this is like a lot of the other KitchenAids, too. Um, you know, you've got your your armature comes in to here, and it turns this. And this is the gear that, you know, a lot of times they'll tell you, you know, to replace it. This is that gear that will, that will break, but they'll tell you to replace it when you redo it. But the, the problem is it's like, you know, it, it is a fiber gear, but they're pretty tough. Um... You know, unless it snaps for any reason, or it's designed to, um, they're a normal use. I don't believe these really get any wear on them. Um, I think that's just what KitchenAid says. So it's another part they can sell. I don't believe these really need replacement. Um, you know, so I mean, unless they're broken or whatever, I I prefer just leave them in. Um, all right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna try and get the gasket off of here. It's I don't don't know. You know, it may need, I may need to order another gasket for it because I think it tore somewhere we're getting it off. But we're going to find out right now. I just set something down to put it on here. Yeah, it's tore right there. So, you know what? Screw it. We're going to order another gasket for this. And i got to get this assembly off here. But I think I'm going to get a bunch of this grease out of here first because... I mean, there's a lot of it. So 
Okay, at this point now it's pretty straightforward. You know, take it apart. This grease is bad thick though. Yeah, it's almost like waxy. Yeah, that's really thick, thick grease right there. So it's you know, no surprise. I mean, with the age of this. Okay, I'm not sure where that cut out, but this part was on here. It was stuck down pretty good. Well, it's got three screws out. Um, but we're, we'll go through and uh, we'll get this all degreased and cleaned up and uh, we'll get this big gear here out now ah, make sure we get our washer with it that goes on the bottom here alright so we got a lot of grease to scrape off of those uh, a little bit more in here but I think what I'm going to do ooh, is uh, right now I want to get the rest of the grease scraped out of the, the gear part of the you know, the gearbox in the upper section of this so we can finish taking that apart without a bunch of grease everywhere. And I'm going to go wash up because I am like covered in grease now. So I'll be right back soon to get that all done. Okay, so we got some parts in the degreaser already. Um, and I scraped a bunch of grease out of the upper half. So I think we're going to finish tearing down this base right now. The first thing we want to do is take off this lock assembly because you see when it locked, you can't flip it up. It locks it from flipping up. But I'm noticing that the arm on here that, that locks it is pinned in here and there's no way to drive that pin out. So we're just going to take off the, the lever and the screw for it and then we'll just make sure we tape that off. And I still got grease all over the tools. Addie's kitchen is just a greasy mess so if you're doing one just plan on having everything covered in grease. Um, rubber gloves is probably a good idea. I should wear them but I don't. Um, I don't like working with gloves on of any kind, but it's, I do advise it though, I mean, if you don't mind gloves, definitely want to get some rubber gloves. Alright, so let's take this knob off here. Screw in the washer. The washer was underneath here. And then there's a little cotter pin here that we want to get off. Wow, it's a little cotter pin, but it's a tough one though. said than done. Even that cotter pin is like really in there good. so small I can't get anything else on it with these but it's so strong that it just twists these um, yeah I don't know uh, I mean I may end up having to cut it off just not so sure if I can find another cotter pin this small I mean I got a local hardware store that's got you know I got all kinds of stuff there. Um, I was surprised at things I've seen. Um, they may have a cotter pin that'll work in here. I gotta figure out how I can get some leverage on this thing now. There we go.
kind of comes out, levers off. We'll keep all those parts together. And, and since we got to tape off all this anyways, um, you know, I'm not going to, you know, I'll just, I'll just make sure this whole thing is taped off because we got to tape this whole section here off anyways. Alright, I'm going to go through and we'll drive this pin out right here. As soon as I find my pin driver. Should be able to pull this pin right out now. Or not. There. There's a pretty long pin in it. some paint down in there, uh, some corrosion on here, um, that was a pretty tight fit so I think we're going to end up taping this off as well so we don't get no powder coat on this part because that was a pretty tight fit down in there. Alright, so other than degreasing this and uh, getting that bushing out I think you know, we'll have to tape this off here too. Um, I think this is pretty much good to go. Um, we gotta get all the rest of the grease out of there. So I'm gonna set this part down. There's another one just about ready for prep. Now, I gotta get the feet off of here. And we gotta get this uh, brass thing that's got like a you know, spiral with a bolt looks to it. Um, let's see if we can feet first. These feet are uh, pretty darn dry and crumbly. But with a little bit of work, they do seem to be coming out. Amazing how these little feet just mash and then become so dry and brittle afterwards. Ah, come on, almost out. There we go. Two more feet. I'll have to see uh, if the feet I have fit this. I believe they will. And I got I got to order more feet anyways because I'm just about out. There, one more. There. Oh, that's half of it. out of here. Hopefully they'll slide right out. And again. That might be so much to hope for. Let's see if we can course it out. Alright, 
Well, more time has passed than, uh, than you realize from watching here, but um, we did get this out, this pin, and this part here. Um, this we can get cleaned up and polished up good. There was quite a bit of corrosion on there holding, holding everything in. Um, but, I mean, it'd be easier to try to tape, tape this up and end up with some kind of edge on here. We won't peel the tape off after we powder coat it. Uh, this did take a heat gun and uh, quite a bit of work just to get this out of here, um, but it's out now. So persistence pays. You see this is still warm where I can get this paint that was chipping before. It's just peeling right off of here and there's some of the original white paint. So um, I think we're definitely going to be, this is like a latex paint, um, I think we're definitely going to be uh, soaking this thing down with some stripper before we even try to put this in a sandblaster because with this latex paint on here and you know I don't blast with a lot of pressure or heavy grit or large volume you know because I most of the stuff that I do is aluminum you know so my blaster is pretty much all set up to do aluminum stuff but it w will not do uh, latex paint like this so fortunately I've got the stripper that'll just eat this stuff right off of here and uh, yeah, then we should be pretty good to pretty much good to go um, but anyways um, I got this stripped down enough to where I can set this in our parts pile. And we can start working on this here now. now. This one here, this has got quite a few parts on here that are going to have to come off. Um, this thing right here is like a dual action lever, so if you can see this, it works. You know, this arm here that goes against the speed control, but also it's got this other arm on here that comes over and catches the on off switch so we're going to go, we're going to take all that off, we'll get this on off switch out of here first now you know it's in a different spot it's got the same screws as like the 4C's and the 3B's Little screws with uh, um, little star lock washers on it. Okay, so we've got our switch out of here. Now we can get this lever off. And there really wasn't much holding that lever on. All right, and there's our lever assembly. You now, which we can clean that up really good. Alright, now, let's stick this on end here, so you guys can see, and I can now, hopefully pull this cord out of here, there we go, what's left of it, I'm going to have to find a new cord restraint also, because this one's broken right in half, alright, but that's no big deal, um, alright, I've got to, Loosen these nuts up here, and I believe once I crack them loose, I may be able to unthread these uh, studs here mm, or not. Okay, now yeah. worth a shot, I guess. I'll work these studs up. Get this one up close to the top. This one will take all the way off. Actually, no, I don't even have to do that. I can use these other nuts. And we'll just do the same thing here. We'll double nut this. Too terribly tight, but it's 
seems to be. If you lock these two nuts together and then they both turn on you, chance that's pretty tight. Ah, so we'll tighten those up a little more. This is seeming to be on there pretty good. Oh, there we go. Alright, so we'll pull these out. Uh, I've got another nut here somewhere. There we go. Yeah, we'll just repeat over here on this side. Fortunately, these aren't threaded in there all that far. You can see how short the threads are. So, I mean, once you get to that point, it's not pretty easy. Alright, looks like we've got a RF capacitor in here that can go. Um, I believe we are now ready to pull this field coil out of here. And what was that? That just fell. metal strip here just fell out of somewhere I'll have to take a look and see where that could have gone let's see if we can finagle this out of here now alright so it looks like one of these field coil leads is uh, connected to this brush holder there. Yep. Alright. So there's actually four leads coming off this field coil. Alright. That's out. That's kind of grungy too. I mean, we can't you know, we'll clean that up as best we can. I mean, there's really not, sometimes there's not a lot you can do to clean up the field coils. You can't really get them wet, you can't get solvent on them. Um, you know, we just wipe them down. And a lot of times, you see, when I put a field coil in, I'll still have black because the tape that wraps the windings, you get that crap, you know, that crap off of there. And it gets all over your hands. Alright, so there's a couple little paper washers on the brush holders here and we want to get the brush holders out and they won't with those so with those off we should be able to loosen up our set screws and they should hopefully pop right out This one I don't think I've got loosened up at all either. Alright, do now. And hopefully these brush holders will pop right out for us. Yeah, they're not too bad at all. And I think they're the just standard brush holders for all the KitchenAids. I mean, so far all the ones I've seen have all looked the same. 
So there's really no surprises in here with this model, even though it's interesting. Not seen it before, there's really no big surprises in here. Um, <coughs> Alright, so now we've got to get this off, but we got to figure out what's holding this onto the shaft. The, you know, the, the PTO inside there, which means I'm going to have to get more grease off of it. So I'm going to have to get dirty again. Let's see if we can do this before we put this into some degreaser. I mean, worst comes to worst, I can always throw it in a degreaser and then try to figure out how it's held on. When I can actually see, um, I mean, a lot of times though, if you just scrape off some grease, you can see. And this is easier than I thought. Way easier than I thought. This whole, uh, this whole thing just slides right in there, so there's no pin holding that on. So that's cool. So we can get this out in a degreaser as well. Let's see if there's a washer on there or anything. Nope. Okay, the washer down here. Alrighty. Well, we've got this thing pretty much tore down. Um, there's really not a lot left. To this here. I mean, try to see if this bushing will come out here. It's not looking like it's going to come out from this side. I gotta make sure there's like no oil wick in there either because it's going to go in the oven with any oil wicks in it either. But it doesn't appear to be. I mean, it appears like it's just everything's just pressed in there and it probably lubricates from the grease in the gearbox, so there probably isn't a wick in there. Um, anyways, we're going to get the rest of the grease out of here and, uh, you know, just clean it out really good. You can still see how much grease is in there. So it's going to take quite a bit of degreasing for that. And that's one more part ready to go. I think we're down to one more part now. And that would be the planetary. And I still got to find out where that went. Um, let's see if I can just... Yep, that screw come right out. So I'm going to take this uh, this whole assembly out here. Washer. And this washer looks like it's got a shoulder on it, so the shoulder faces up. Just something I need to remember. Okay, there's our gear. all my tools after this too. Alright, the chef should come out, yep, and then the washer. Alrighty, so there's that washer. There's also a washer, you know, a big washer right down here in the center. So we'll put that aside. This we get cleaned up really good and set that aside. We got this wick in here that's gotta come out. That was easy. Looks like uh, on these it's just held in there with a little spring clip. Okay, that's new to me. Um, all right, now other than that, we just got a buttload of grease in here that we've got to get out. I think all the washers and everything are out of here. Um, yeah, it just seems to be just a buttload of grease that we had to get out. So. We are ready to uh, start getting things cleaned and degreased on here. So I'm going to get right on that. I'm going to start getting all this stuff degreased uh, so I can get it up in a sandblaster. And then it's going to have to outgas for a while. I mean, there's going to be there's going to be a lot of outgassing going on here because all these parts are just you know they're they're aluminum, um, you know, or or a uh, um, alloy of some kind, aluminum alloy of some kind. But you know, there are pores they will soak up a lot of grease. Of course, this piece right here doesn't feel like aluminum. This feels almost like cast iron. Um, or something extremely heavy. Maybe it's because of the counterweight in there that feels so heavy. Um, but anyways, you know they're all porous, so they're gonna have to outgas for a while, and uh, then we'll get everything cleaned up. Um, 
you know, sandblasted, powder coated, and once all these other parts are cleaned up, we'll come back and we'll start getting everything put back together and uh, and um, see if this thing runs. Which I'm pretty confident this thing's going to run, and I think it's going to run well. Um, that's my prediction for it. But anyways, um, you know, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Um, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell so that you can get notified when this is done and, and we post a video part two of this and, and any other videos that we post. Um, but as always, I appreciate you guys watching and we will catch you on the next one.